This is TID 61 component ID 80. It's the EVAP leak test where a 40,000th leak is being detected. The component ID 80 indicates we have a minimum value or limit. The PCM runs a leak detection pump to build pressure in the EVAP system. The pressure decay is then used by the PCM for leak determination. Now the values aren't converted into measurement values by Chrysler, so use the data as a relative indication of performance. We will use vehicle data to show values. Here's our scan data on an OTC. Remember we'll fail when we're below the minimum. TID61 in this case had a measured value of 166 and a minimum limit of 13. We passed the test easily. Keep that in mind in mode 6. You only need to do testing if you have a failure. When you have a failure we're going to have to go deeper inside and do things like look at the connector on the PCM and take it to a wiring diagram. Now this is a wiring diagram we have here. You need something like this. We're going to give you a preview of what we're going to talk about with this diagram. When the PCM is ready to start the monitor, it will activate the leak detection pump solenoid right here by applying ground. As you can see the red wire at the top on pin 2 supplies power to the PCM for, and the solenoid. The solenoid opens a vacuum valve to pull L, the, the LDP diaphragm up which opens the sensor switch. Now we're going to show you that in detail. You really can't tell that from the schematic. You need a number of things. That's why we're going to take a little time here. Once the, the PCM sees the switch open, it removes the ground of the solenoid and a return spring forces the diaphragm down. This pumps pressure into the eval system. And this action continues until the diaphragm pumps up a pressure into the EVAP system to cause the switch to remain open. Now this is determined by the strength of the return spring and the return spring is calibrated to be about five to seven uh, inches of water pressure. The length of time this switch remains open is now going to tell the PCM the amount of pressure or the size of the leak. Uh, we're going to take you to an animation now so you can see exactly how this works. You have a preview, you have an understanding of what's happening, you've seen the schematic. Let's go look at it in detail. We're going to use some great animation from Star Envirotech. People make great smoke machines for EVAP testing. We're going to be connected to our canister here where we'll be getting sucking fresh air in and it'll be coming from the vent up here in this diagram. Now this is normal operation. We're going to block manifold vacuum with a valve at the top. This is going to keep the vent open so normal canister purge can take place. What we're going to do when we're ready to unblock this vacuum that's been blocked is we're going to energize the solenoid. When the solenoid is energized, we pull that valve back. This is going to open it up and open expose that passage and it's going to pass vacuum down to the top of the diaphragm. And when vacuum is applied to the top of the diaphragm, several things are all going to happen at one time. So pay careful attention. First thing we're going to happen, the diaphragm is going to be pulled up and we're going to close the vent. This seals up the EVAP system. The reed switch opens and the check valve opens to allow fresh air to come in and fill the chamber. This is the first phase of getting ready for the leak check. Now just pulling the diaphragm up does not make a pump. To function as a pump, the diaphragm is going to have to work in a cycle up and down and have a spring that's calibrated to push it down. Now in this particular case the diaphragm return spring is calibrated force of six to seven inches of water. When pressure builds in the EVAP system to six to seven inches the diaphragm stays up. Now the PCM is going to activate it every time you see it goes down. If pressure builds too quickly the EVAP system is restricted. That's one finding. If pressure never builds the system has a gross leak. Once the PCM determines that the system is staying pumped up, the diaphragm is staying up, it can measure the time to calculate the amount of leaks we have, major leaks, minor leaks. So you need to understand a little bit of how the system works like this in order to diagnose. We're going to use a diagram from the MPC SmartSpec.
Now we know we can't wait for the EVAP monitor to run to test this. So we're going to start checking things. B plus has to be supplied here when we're running and the key is on. With the engine running, activate the solenoid by applying a ground to this circuit. This is the same thing the PCM does. Engine vacuum should be applied to the diaphragm, which should cause the switch to open. Now, running the switch open one time is not going to do it. You're going to need B plus to the solenoid, a good ground connection, and manifold vacuum to make the switch stay activated. What we're going to have to do is cycle it off and on to get it to stay open. So this is a test we can do. But you can use a scan tool. However, we're not going to really actually run the solenoid. We can activate it, but it's not going to open the switch because we have no vacuum applied. We're going to go to the actuator test mode, and we're going to activate the LDP, LDP test. Here it is in still form. Let's show you what's up here. First of all, the red trace at the bottom is the LTP switch. It can be used to activate the LTP with a 50% duty cycle. But as you notice, the switch, sense switch does not open because we have no engine manifold vacuum. Now we'll take a look at this. When it's grounded, which is what we used our jumper lead to do, we can activate the solenoid. Here's actual film moving around. This is what you're going to see on your scope to verify the solenoid is doing. We're going to use the field test. We're going to actually go under the car, put our hands on it, and see if it clicks. We call this the click test. If the solenoid is clicking when we have it activated, that's fine. The point we're trying to make here is the actuator test mode tells if the solenoid is working. It does not tell us if it pulls a vacuum. We do that manually like we showed you in the diagram. You cycle it on and off three or four times, you'll find it stays up. If the, sp if the pressure stays up, the solenoid is working and the manifold vacuum is holding it open and the system is holding pressure. You pass your manual test. Now you might want to go have a look at smoke testing because we think smoke testing is probably the most practical way to test this and we'll show you how to block it off and do a smoke test in smoke testing the LDP.